Hey guys, Fishing Bridge 20. Uh, it's been a long time since this tank was in the uh, on camera, so I figured today I'd do an update. I have not done an update on this tank in a long, long, long time. Um, so there's plenty of new stuff to talk about. So I guess we'll just jump right in. So last time I did an update on this was like it was like 2014 and it was like just now hitting fall. I have put out a lot of, not really, I wouldn't say a lot of, less than what I normally do, but um, videos, different kind of videos, like all, um, all about SPS, and then I was starting up another tank. So if you guys didn't see that, that's my 40 breeder build. Um, you can check that out, it's pretty cool. So this tank isn't really packed full of stuff right now. It's um kind of how was in a downfall there while I started up another tank, the uh, the new 40. Um, when I first did the 40 gallon tank um, video, that was right after I set it up. So it has changed a lot since then and the SPS that I had in this tank now this this stuff right here I've had forever the purple digi and the orange digi and the green Priscilla Pora here that's all old stuff I've had that you guys have probably seen before um, but I'm talking about like my big blue torque colony which I just actually watched the last update I posted on this right before I'm making this video just to refresh and my mind of what was going on back when I made that video and I mean my torque coral I had a big old it's this coral right here actually this little blue guy he was the size of my fist like this my hand I mean and he had five branches just like my hand does uh, fingers so he was huge that is just one that's like I guess the pinky finger of my little representation I did there um, I have some huge chunks of him in the 40 breeder and what happened was, for whatever reason, my alkalinity dropped to six. So I had stuff doing the rapid, not really rapid, probably slow tissue necrosis. So it was, it wasn't fun. I lost, I didn't actually lose anything. Um, I fragged everything and I got it back under control before I lost anything. I didn't lose a single coral. I just lost like the big ones. So like that big colony, if you would cut off my fingers that's what I saved so I lost the base of him which was it's kind of a very important part but um, yeah um, I'll just go ahead and throw up a 40 breeder pick so as you can tell the 40 breeder has a lot of the SPS that I was um that I had in this tank and I just put it up there under my radian because also it was like when it rains it pours this tanks alkalinity drops to six the light fixture decided to break and then red bugs show up. It was not a fun time. So the light fixture for whatever reason works now again. Now two two bulbs are out, but they've been like off and on working. So I know they're gonna go out. I'm looking for a new fixture. I'm going LED. Um maybe LED T5 mixture because I've had such good luck with T5s, but got rid of the red bugs a couple weeks ago. Doing pretty good everything is back on track I'm now seeing growth which I'm very happy about growth and polyp extension so I mean this was my Poseidon torque colony which was I mean if it was sitting on the sand bed it was probably this tall it was super big so that's him and I have a couple frags of him around and then here's my red dragon right here I had a colony a huge colony of him and that's what remains um, there's a couple other frags of the red dragon too, but that one is the one that's been doing the best. He's been growing pretty well. So, and then all, of course, mostly it was the torts that I lost, which I, I love the torts, so that I, that was really annoying. I didn't lose, the digis weren't even affected. They didn't even phase them. The millies got pissed off, and the other one was my red planet, which I have a lot of frags of, but the major frag is right there. 
I have it growing in a, a plating pattern. There's actually two huge frags right there. It's, it's very nice that I was able to save those, and they're doing very well. But um, I had to chop this guy. He started doing the rapid tissue necrosis. My son set Millie. Um, you can see I just glued him right there. Same with my Aussie blue tenuous, which is right there. And I did lose one of my tricolors, but that's my other colony. And the tank does look white right now, and as you saw, that's because two blue bulbs are out, so that's why it looks a little more white. Um, but it's weird, they, they like come on all of a sudden, so they might do that in this video, but... Um, um, a lot of LPS is gone. I moved that either up to the 40 breeder, or got rid of it, like this blue hammer. I don't really want to call it blue, it's, it, it's kind of blue, it's, I'd call it more of a turquoise, but it's, uh... I, it was twice the size of this dude, so I cut him and just left me with that. I didn't want to have a big one anymore. Um, so, yeah, that that's what went on with this tank. So, as of right now, I'm moving forward. Everything is looking good. There's a new... I've actually purchased stuff uh, recently, so I've got new arrivals. First new rival, I have a Flame Angel now. I've had him forever, and I mean, it feels like forever, like he's been in here forever, but he wasn't in the last update, so I mean, that just gives you a rendition of when the last update was. This guy's awesome, he is beautiful. You can see he just has like bright purple, bright red, bright orange. Emperor was not happy when he went in there, but yeah, this is my, this is my Emperor. He has, I just got him in the last update I posted. He is well on his way through puberty. He's got his bright yellow tail and he's starting to get white cheeks. I'm very happy with him. So you can see their buds now. That not really. He still bullies the Flame Angel a little bit, but the Flame Angel's awesome. And the Flame Angel doesn't nip. Neither does the Emperor, so I got these two angel fish, which are really nice additions. And then the other new fish is right down here. Oh. It's a uh, strawberry Pseudochromus. So, no idea where he just went to. There he is. He's the only small fish that has survived with my puffer. Wherever you are, Mr. Puffer. He's around here somewhere. But, um, diamond, my diamond goby, my clowns died during the, they were the only two fish I lost during all that nonsense that went on with my tank I was telling you guys about earlier. I don't know why, it was like, they've been in here the longest, they were, they came in with this yellow tang, the yellow tang was introduced to the tank with those two clowns, so now yellow tang is the oldest, oldest fish in here, along with the blue hippo not far behind him, so, um, yeah, they were the two fish I lost, Puffer didn't eat them, Puffer can't not catch this guy, so that's why he, um, he's still around. He, they'll actually swim right next to each other. Puffer has given up on trying to eat him. I don't know where the heck Puffer was. He just, he was just over here. So you can see there's a little strawberry. I added two of them, and i thinking the other one might have gotten eaten, or bullied enough to the point of dying. But he's a really nice little splash of purple. He doesn't hurt, he doesn't bully anybody. So... I do plan on adding more clownfish, probably maroons. I'm I need big fish because I've chosen to have a puffer fish in my tank, but he's well worth it. So with that, that's it for fish. We will talk about corals and inverts next. As for inverts, this is the only guy that's new. Had a little flame scallop, super awesome. Here comes Mr. Emperor, but. He's, he's just, he's not the electric type. I thought he was, but he's not. I'll probably get another one of those, the electric type, just um, either in the 40 breeder or with this guy. I'm not really sure. But man, he, he's just awesome. I love having that bright red. So, yeah, that's it for inverts. The other invert I have is a giant rose bubble tip anemone that I had put over here. So, and I mean, this thing is pink, pink, pink. And it's... It's the size of a dinner platter, and I got him pretty cheap, so what I'm doing with him was I had the MP10 off for about two days. I'd, I'd come home, and I'd turn it on so when I could watch the tank, but when I was not home, I had to turn it off, because I didn't want him 
he was sitting right there. I didn't want him blown up and getting caught in the MV10. And I was trying to get him to foot down. And eventually he footed down, but not, you know, he wasn't comfortable. He was moving. I didn't want to risk it. So I shut the MP10, or I, I took him out, threw him up in the 40 breeder while he was getting used to aquarium life. He is now attached to a really nice piece of rock that I can easily move. And I can put him in here and he could walk around, do his thing. And he's a little bit more acclimated because the 40 breeder doesn't have as uh, heavy a flow. So I also just recently got another green bubble tip anemone. It's actually a purple tip green bubble. It's pretty sweet. So I have like a little anemone garden upstairs, and I actually have clownfish upstairs in the 40 breeder, so that is where the anemones are. So you'll see those in a future update.